I'm Karina Del Rosario. I'm a cultural worker and visual teaching artist. Thanks for joining me today to make some art. Last time I um, introduced you to one of my favorite artists, Romare Bearden, and we did some quick sketches of places that uh, either where we live or are important to us. So here's my sketch from last time the Chief South Trail, um, where I live in Beacon Hill. Um, today, what we're gonna need uh, are a pair of scissors, a glue stick, um, one big piece of paper uh, that's gonna serve as your base, um, and then a bunch of recycled papers. In front of me, I've got some origami paper. I've got uh, an envelope. Envelopes are great because inside is um, usually there are usually some patterns in there. I've got newspapers and catalogs. Um, I know a lot of people don't like junk mail, but it's kind of handy for me. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today: is repurpose some of the um, materials that we have on hand uh, wherever we are. Let's talk a little bit more though about Romer Bearden and how he made his amazing collages. So Romer Bearden would draw his neighborhood in Harlem and then he would transform it into this piece of artwork called the block. And you'll notice that he's got the basic ideas down from his original sketch, but he had left himself room to use his imagination Include, and include all kinds of characters and uh, happenings on the block. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use our imagination, but base it on something in reality. We're gonna take our sketch and uh, transform that into a collage. Now, a collage is a type of art making where you take a number of materials. In this case, we're taking uh, recycled papers and you basically cut, tear, arrange, and glue those down onto a base. Collage is really fun uh, because it seems like it's gonna be easy, but because we're basing it on something in reality, we can really make it uh, much more interesting instead of just having a bunch of random pieces of paper cut up and stuck onto a paper. So before we start with our own uh, collage project, let's take a moment to look at another one of Romare Bearden's collages. This one is from his grandparents' home uh, in North Carolina. What do you notice? What shapes do you see? Do you notice how um, the colors pop out at different parts. Yeah, Bearden uses uh, contrasting colors uh, so that there are some sections that will make it easier for, for you to recognize that it's transitioning from one thing to something else. So it's transitioning from the shoulder of his great-grandmother to the wall. We're gonna think about that or keep that in mind when we're making our own art. We're gonna think about colors and shapes. And another thing that I notice in Romare Bearden's work is texture. Texture is what something might feel like if you could touch it. So he's using uh, papers or uh, material that has some light and dark parts to it. So it gives us this idea of texture. So we're gonna use that color, shapes, and texture, and we're also gonna use contrast opposites. Contrast could be uh, having something dark against something light, having something that's solid next to something that's really patterned or printed. So we're gonna keep that in mind when we're making our own collage. So let's go back to this drawing, this quick sketch that I made of the Chief Self Trail. I'm gonna start by um, using the background. So up here was the sky. So I'm gonna look for some papers that have a lot of blue in it. Um, and you know, these are catalogs that I had found and it's gonna be okay that they have stuff on it. I just need blue. 
So I'm gonna start by cutting out the parts of my background because I'm gonna be layering some things on top. I'm not gonna worry too much right now about shape. I just want color. I'll add the shape a little bit later once I kind of figure out how much blue I'm gonna need. All right, don't wanna make it too obvious that it's a shirt, so I'm gonna take the label out. I'm referencing my uh, sketch, so I'm gonna get some blue down on the paper. That's about, that's about enough blue, I think. I think I wanna cover a little bit more this way. And because the, the, um, I'm combining all these different uh, papers and it's gonna cover the whole top, I'm being pretty um, loose with my cutting because I'm just gonna cover it all up like that, okay? I'm gonna wait to glue it down until I um, am ready. So now we have this part here that's gonna be the grass of the field. So I'm gonna look for some greens. Um, there you go. Ha, ah, grass for grass, what do you know? Um, and I might even just tear it. Sometimes when you tear paper that's colored, you get this fun little white edge. So that can help kind of delineate or separate the blue part from the green part. I'm just going to tear some more here. Just lining things up. I'm gonna need some more green for the other part. Oh, that one's got a cat in it. I'm not gonna tear up the cat. Um, more green. And then I'm gonna need to fill this up over here as well. So we'll just have some more. Now, if this were a cooking show, I would have like the finished pie waiting underneath this table, but we're just making art because I wanted to make this. All right. Okay, looks like I'm gonna need a little bit more green there. So because I am um, filling my background up, um, I'm just kind of patching together different blues and greens. So it's okay that they're going to um, overlap with each other. It's okay that they're from different kinds of papers. That actually adds some more interest. I'm gonna be gluing smaller pieces right on top of it, layering over so um, that's why I'm not too concerned about how rough um, the background is looking. I mean, I could be pickier, but I'm not too worried about it. And I think that's the joy of making collage is that because you're using recycled materials, nothing is too precious. It can be torn up, papered over, all right, so I have a pretty um, solid background with uh, blues uh, for the sky 
and a variety of greens for the grass, okay? Doesn't look like much right now, but we'll transform it into something. So I'm gonna look at my um, reference drawing again of the Chief Self Trail, and I'm gonna uh, focus on these ele electrical towers, and then some of these houses here, and then also this pathway. So I'm gonna look for uh, maybe black or bra um, black or grays to represent the electrical towers. So I could use the inside of this envelope. Um, so maybe I'll start with that. You can, if you want, use a ruler to um, draw straight lines. And then I typically use a pen um, just because it's a little bit easier to see than pencil when I'm um, drawing over uh, paper that's got some print on it. So I'm just using a black fine point marker for that. So then I can see my lines. Like I said, the inside of um, envelopes can sometimes be really interesting to use. One thing you wanna remember when you're using glue sticks is um, try to protect the stuff that's underneath. So I will usually use some scratch paper and then um, do my gluing on top of that. And each time I'll find a new spot. That way I'm not getting glue all over the place. And I don't um, end up getting glue all over the furniture too. So I have most of the pieces down um, on my, of my collage. I think what I need to do is, I, um, I put this a little bit too high, the uh, electrical tower, so I'm gonna fill that up with a little bit more green so I can get a slope, and then I'm gonna add a path. Okay, so we're almost there. And then I went over my paper. That looks kind of messy to me, so I'm gonna straighten that out and by trimming it. I still want to take the time to make it look good and finished. I don't wanna have it uh, feel as messy as I started it uh, in the end. So then I'm gonna need to do a path here. Um, and this is when it's gonna be helpful to um, do, to mark up my um, path with a pen. So I'm going to use my black marker to draw out some curved lines so that when I cut it, I can be a little bit more precise.
the part that's a little tricky if you're using a marker is that I don't like it showing up in my final product, so I will trim it away so it's not so obvious. So the thing with um, collage is that even though I have this reference drawing, even though I um, remember specific things about my time walking along this trail, I can still use my imagination to add something that maybe wasn't there. So I noticed when I was looking through my recycled materials that there were some pretty funny animal ones. Um, so I'm gonna put some animals on the trail that wouldn't normally be there. Because why not, right? Uh, let's see. Haha. -ha. I'm going to put. So, because um, this little animal that I am cutting out is a little bit dark. I'm gonna leave some of the white part of the paper around it so that it sort of works like an outline and it'll make it easier to see when I have it glued down against the darker background. So again, we wanna use some contrast to help distinguish the different papers that we're using, the different objects we're trying to represent. So I think this is a little, I don't know, a little creature uh, that's parachuting. So I'm gonna have a parachuting animal into my field. And parachuting animal and then I think I'm gonna have one more object in the foreground um, I think I saw some chickens in here so I'm gonna again just use my imagination to um, add a little bit more interest into the picture I think that one Let's do this one instead. Usually when you wanna add something that's gonna be down in the bottom, which is considered the foreground, we kinda of wanna make it a little bit bigger. So I think just for kicks, see this part right here on the path, it looks kind of empty to me. Um, and even though it's nice that it stands out, it feels a little too blank. Maybe, and sometimes with collage, it's okay to, again, experiment. See what works. If you don't glue things down right away, then you can just see how it looks. And if you don't like how it looks, you just get it out of the way. So I was gonna put this little picnic basket here, but it feels a little too busy. So instead, I'm just gonna use this other picture of some people. one will do. All right. When you do your own collage, you can either use the picture that I used of the Chief Self Trail. Um, you can use your own sketch of that, or you can do it with any um, 
picture of a place that's important to you. The thing that um, makes art making um, important to me and special to me is it can give me some time to think about uh, places and people that um, are special to me so that when I am feeling, I don't know, whatever, anxious or blue, um, I can focus my energies on thinking about them. So here's my collage. And just so that we can compare with my original drawing, okay, there might be, I might go back and um, add some dark lines here, but here's the electrical towers. We use some lines for that. We, I use some, um, a shape here out of green paper to represent a tree a few different shapes here to represent um, the houses along the path. This one here, I might actually go back and do in a brighter color because there's not a lot of contrast, so it kind of blends into the grass. So I might go back and replace that. Um, we have this curved uh, area here that is a contrasting color from the green grass. Yeah, so we used color, shapes, lines. Uh, we use some texture, and then we also use some contrast to differentiate the different parts of our scene. So that's it for now uh, on our collage inspired by Romare Bearden. I hope you can go and find a place that is special to you and make some art inspired by that. Thanks for joining me. Again, I'm Karina Del Rosario. I'm a cultural worker and teaching artist. See you next time.